All right, so this is going to be a Costco sale item review of this KitchenAid bowl lift stand mixer. Okay, so price of this normally is um, $399.99. It was $100 off. So basically, <clears throat> instead of $400, about $300 plus tax. All right, there's a six quart, 5.7 liter bowl. Um, all right. Bowl lift design for larger quantities <clears throat> makes up to 13 dozen cookies. Here you can see uh, contour silver. Um, it also comes in the KitchenAid red, the classic KitchenAid color. <clears throat> but I decided on this one because I don't bake too often and I didn't want some flashy bright color sitting in the corner of my kitchen. Um, but yeah, anyways, also it matches more with stuff that's in the kitchen. So... <laughs> All right, um, I noticed this um, just now, special gift included, Flex Edge Beater. So I didn't know it had that, but it has that. All right, professional, over 10 attachments available that are, that are sold separately. I always wondered what this little front thing was for. Uh, apparently you can put attachments on it, okay? Um, my mom has a KitchenAid, a different model, <coughs> but um, yeah. Anyways, here you can see you have this beater, you have the... Um, flex edge one so if you have like uh cake batters and stuff i think it kind of like squeegees it off the edge so it doesn't just stick to the edge then you have the dough hooks you have this regular whisk beater and then you have this kind of funnel thing to keep everything inside all right anyways we're gonna open it and take a look <clears throat> um let's see america designed and assembled in the usa and then they have a one year warranty here i think yep one year limited warranty. Visit KitchenAid.com for warranty details uh, for countries outside the USA. Visit InternationalKitchenAid.com and then other languages there. Contact KitchenAid um, at 800-541-6390. I'm reading this because I know it's going to be hard for you guys to see there. And then they have Puerto Rico and Canada number <coughs> uh, for Canada, 800-807-6777. <coughs> All right. And I think that's it. All rights reserved and blah, blah, blah. Okay, on the side here you can see they show different attachments that you can have. Um, it tells you to keep this end up, so I don't think you should flip it over sideways or anything. I don't know if that will damage the contents inside. <clears throat> but yeah, they have a noodle pasta maker thing, and then this shredding vegetable thing, and then kind of this slicer cutter. Over 10 attachments. All right, so you can kind of check... They have the barcode here. Um, then they show the different attachments here. All right. Is there anything on the bottom? Not really. There's some stuff on the bottom, but I don't know if I'm going to get to that. Let's go ahead and rotate this. This has the same stuff there. Then here they have, it also says this end up, six quart, 5.7 ounce stainless steel bowl for up to 13 dozen cookies. Bowl lift design raises and lowers the bowl and provides sturdy bowl support for mixing heavy ingredients or larger uh, large quantities. Over 10 optional attachments make everything from fresh pasta to burgers, veggie, uh, veggie noodles, ice cream, and more. <clears throat> All right, 10 optimized speeds and 67 touch points around the mixer bowl for great mixing results. Right, uh, let me see what's on the bottom real quick here. My head's probably gonna get in the way. <clears throat> For household use only. Okay, and yeah. Then they have uh, some Missouri address on there, UL, and it says the box is recyclable. All right, anyways, um, sorry for going through all this stuff. I know some people don't really like watching this and they just wanna see me open it up and use it. Um, if you're worried or if you want to do that, you can go ahead and fast forward through. There's a little dot um, on the time bar that you can just grab and drag it as far as you want until you see me actually opening and using it. Okay, <clears throat> so I don't know. I kind of have to teach people how to use YouTube because a lot of people um, don't know that that bar exists or something. Anyways, let's go ahead and cut this open. <clears throat> okay. I probably should have mentioned that at the very beginning of the video because the people that already got that far are probably like, man, I already sat through too much of it and just left. <laughs> All right. Anyways, open this up. 
okay i like to kind of show everything so if you ever go to costco and need to return it or something or if something's missing in your box you can see exactly what was in mine all right here you can see american brand since 1919 sorry for the glare um all right and then oops sorry for knocking you guys over here you have this we can help thing if you have questions or concerns about your product, please reach out to our customer service experts before returning to the store. Right? Visit us online for chat, email, expert advice, and troubleshooting, or contact us at your convenience with the phone number below. So they have USA phone number here, Canada phone number there. Hopefully you guys can read all of that. All right, 1-800-541-6390 for USA or producthelp.kitchenaid.com. For Canada, 800-807-6777, kitchenaid.ca forward slash en underscore ca forward slash service dash and dash support dot html. And then they have for French, kitchenaid.ca forward slash fr underscore ca. So basically the same thing as the Canada one, except they put fr instead of en. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so inside, first thing we got... Um, I guess they show you every single attachment here. All right, so KitchenAid, and then they have this. Um, I don't know if what these numbers are, is if that's for like for how you can order it. Um, this looks like a fruit thing, KSMMGA. I mean, you can read that all yourself. I'll kind of just go through it. Here you can have the one for meat. Let me get this closer. You have this other thing for making sausages. <clears throat> I guess they have the code like something with sausage or something. I don't know. Actually, the first one looks like for sausages as well. So I don't really get meat grinder, meat for burgers, another grinder for different kinds of sausages, I guess. Oh, this one grinds the meat. This grinds the meat. This looks like it's for like putting it into the casings. Um, and then this looks like it purees or something to make like a ketchup this one looks like it makes smoothies this one's for juicer orange juice or something all right <clears throat> you have this to make uh vegetable spaghetti noodles or vegetable pasta you have this one to make sheets of vegetables you have this to chop up vegetables to little bits you have this to make these i don't know what that is like cheese <laughs> i don't know here you go this one's for making ice cream this one's for like melted strawberries chocolate sorry melted chocolate not strawberries you have this for making flat pasta noodles this one for making cut flat pasta noodles this for making those uh round tube noodles raviolis all right powdered stuff more powdered stuff and then you got these different kinds of bowls they have glass one looks like plastic or ceramic or i don't know all right they have all different kinds here with different designs then on the back thank you <clears throat> thanks for your purchase thanks for purchasing a KitchenAid stand mixer we are excited for you to explore a world of possibilities in the kitchen All right explore our attachments and elevate your everyday creations so here they have all the different ones you can spiralize fresh zucchini um, to make like salads and stuff All right this one to make sun-dried tomato fettuccine from scratch pasta cutter attachments and this one um what shredder to pre prepare fresh veggies for your avocado toast so they have these to make different things all right okay enough of that let's go on to the next thing here you can see now we can finally access the machine there's the dough hook on top here you can see on here use speed two only so they tell you not to use the higher speeds people are probably going to ignore this and then screw up their machine um, but yeah here it says to use speed two only okay that's the dough hook that's for like breads and stuff depends what you're trying to make okay we have the instruction booklet here let's go ahead and pull the machine out um, this is the funnel thing it's wrapped in paper okay so this goes on top of the bowl and makes it so you can funnel in the ingredients and also helps prevent stuff from flying out as you mix. Okay, looks like this. We're going to set that aside. 
I am going to have to like rinse all these stuff off. I'm going to make something in here. Um, some cookie dough, like a thick cookie dough. Not like a liquidy kind, more like a powdery. So we'll see how that goes. All right. This thing is in the styrofoam. Um, it's going to be hard to lift this out with the camera in my way, but let me see what I can do. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be tough with the camera in my way. Let's see here. I'm going to have to get in the view probably. So I'm going to grab over here on the mixer itself. And it seems like you probably want somebody to help you hold the box down. All right, I'm going to hold down the box with one hand and I'm going to lift from the other side with the other. And oh, I see what's going on. The little handles on the side here, they get, they're pushed in and they're getting caught on the styrofoam there. So you might need something to push it. I got my hand in there and I pushed it outwards. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, get your hand in there, push the cardboard out, and push that out of the way. Okay, I think we should be able to get this out now. I'm going to hold this down, get my hand in there, and there we go. All right, so we got this out. Ooh. All right, what do we got next? We got this green, random green card that fell in here. Right, congratulations on your new stand mixer purchase. All right, if you need help, they have a phone number here. Important information you need to know, if beater hits the bowl upon first use, see user manual for adjusting the beater to bowl clearance. Make sure the back of the bowl is securely snapped into the neck of the stand mixer. If product emits unusual odor upon initial use, new electrical motors will often emit an odor upon initial use. This is normal. Oh, my cat just went behind me. I was like, what was that? All right. If the product shuts off after extensive use, the motor has automatic sensor that will keep motor from overheating by shutting itself off. If this occurs, let the mixer rest for 20 minutes before restarting. If the, I feel like they should make an automatic timer that it doesn't turn on for 20 minutes because I know some people go, why did it turn off? And then they'll just turn it off and turn it back on. I don't know if they do that. Maybe it does. And maybe you'll be like, why isn't it working? And then 20 minutes later, it will start working. I don't know. I don't know if I should test that. I don't want to overheat my mixer. <laughs> All right. If the top of the mixer feels warm to the touch after extensive use, um, after use, it is normal for the motor to heat up and feel uncomfortable to the touch. All right. Important. Please do not return the product to the store for assistance. Call KitchenAid. All right. They, they're trying to get you to not return it to Costco, even though Costco has really good return. But um, yeah, all right, so we got this out. You can see they have the beater attachment already in there. <clears throat> My cat's wanting to get into the camera. I'm gonna rotate this here. You can see they have the other mixer right here. Oh, <laughs> I pushed it out. So I guess it just sits in there like this. Oh, so it sits in here like this and the beater end, it comes out by pushing it through that way. And this thing kind of sits in there. All right, so it looks like that. <clears throat> Again, I am gonna go over the instruction manual before I start using it. So if you don't wanna hear any of that, you can fast forward through, but a lot of times there's important stuff in there that you might need to know, all right? <clears throat> okay, so it looks like the extra beater attachment is in here, okay? Um, I don't know if we can get it out without taking out the whole thing. Yeah, let's go ahead and take the whole thing out. So I'm going to hold this up by here, and then I'm going to pull the styrofoam off to the side. There we go. So we got this one out. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, we're going to get the second one out. So I'm going to lift it up here <clears throat> and see if we can slide this off. Oh, that doesn't want to slide off. Is there a special way to get this thing out? <clears throat> huh, okay. I'm going to move it over, kind of leaning it. This thing's like stuck on there. Okay, so you kind of like push it over that way. And there we go. Okay. So it has to kind of like swing off. You can't like pull it out from the bottom. You have to slide the top out sideways. Okay. And that's what this looks like in there. Not that it really matters. Okay. <clears throat> we'll set the cardboard aside for now. All right, so what do we got? I don't know if I should get this out of view. Oops. 
All right, let's lower the camera a little bit because uh, we don't need to see that much. I'm gonna tilt it over a little more. You're gonna see more junk in the background. Sorry, but I got lots of junk over here. Okay, anyways, we got the mixer here. They have the different speeds here. Six quart, 590 watts. All right, this should lift up. Where's the lock? You got the plug cord coming out the back here. Caution, unplug before um, inserting or removing parts, right? Because you don't want to plug stuff in and then accidentally turn it on. Let's go ahead and see about... <clears throat> All right, I'm going to move it from here. Wow, this thing's heavy. Okay, so we got this. Um, what else? It says KitchenAid on the front here. All right. And then you got KitchenAid. This is for the attachments. So you can open this thing up and then you can put the other attachments. You can see the way it works is it has this square. So the square little shaft will go in there and then it will spin that to turn the attachments. All right. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, I guess it screws in to tighten it on. It has a little like sharp point and that will hold the attachments in place. Okay. And let's rotate this again i'm grabbing closer towards the back because yeah i don't want the weight of that to um kind of fold it up here we go we have the other additional beater here with the squeegee attachment which will go along the side of the bowl to scrape the um batter and stuff off so that's what this looks like okay i don't know why ew, why does it have some like brown powder stuff on it I don't know why they didn't make it like a matching color here. You can see these are all gray. I don't know if I don't know if the red one will have red attachments. I hope not. I think it's still going to be gray or white. Um, but this is you can see this one's white. Okay. All right, we're going to set those attachments aside now. Let's go ahead now get the plug out of here. Okay. Right, the plug looks like that. Don't just yank it out, obviously. Interesting, they put a zip tie on here so you don't just plug it in right away. <clears throat> Never seen anyone do that before. <laughs> All right, they have this warning on here, electrical shock hazard. Plug into a grounded three prong outlet. Do not remove the ground prong. Do not use an adapter. Do not use an extension cord. Failure to follow these instructions can result in death, fire, or electrical shock. All right, so yeah. And then California residents only warning cancer and reproductive harm. Somehow, if you don't live in California, you won't get, um, you won't have cancer or reproductive issues. I don't know how that works. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we'll move that out of the way. Okay. There's a card in here. I'm guessing this is for the warranty or something. Okay. To register, register by mail. They have that. All right. They ask you for the model and serial number. Locate model and serial number either on the box label or the bottom of the mixer space and back. Okay. Then you have this. You do have to put a stamp to send it in. Um, I don't know if they have an online registration. I don't know why. Register in minutes. Okay, here you go. This is probably to do online. Quick access to product updates and warranty information. Receive special offer. New launches and promotions, easy access to recipes and expert tips. So you can register online. Here you go. There's the website there, I think. All right. And if you do not return this card, it won't diminish your warranty rights. Um, I think it just makes it easier. Okay. It's so like you won't lose your receipt or anything like that. But yeah, they'll give you product updates, warranty information, and offers and stuff if there's like a recall or anything then they'll give you that um register with your smartphone um i don't know there's a little qr code i don't know if i showed that too clear i don't know if that has <clears throat> um important stuff so i don't want to show it maybe it's to register mine i don't want people to register my um mixer with that but here you go you can text a photo of this camera icon to this number or scan the QR code and I think that will allow you to register it okay um, as for the um, what do you call there's some like little bits of stuff here I think it's like a uh, plastic or st 
the styrofoam bits. I don't know, but there's some stuff stuck in there. It's like plastic bits or something. All right, on the very bottom, there is... Okay, I'm going to have to be careful with this. Ugh. On the very bottom, there is a serial number and model number there. Um, and then they have some more information. Let me see if I can show you this. Okay, I'm going to cover that. So I'm covering the serial number and model number. Then they have this 120 volts, 60 hertz, max 590 watts, assembled in the USA. All right, household mixer. So yeah, this is meant to be used at home, not to be used as a commercial mixer blender for like a bakery or something. Okay. Anyways, here we go. Um, this lowers that. Okay. So that lowers it. And then you can, let's see, how does this work? So this raises it, this lowers it. And then why isn't it coming off? Huh? I'm confused. <laughs> why isn't it supposed to just lift off? I'm confused. Okay, I'm going to read the instructions because I'm not understanding what's going on here. Okay, this raises it up. Is it locked? Oh, why is it locked on there? So, okay, so I don't know how, but it was locked on there super tight. Um, okay, now it's okay. So, as you can see, if we raise this up, okay, and then we can raise that back down. We can lift this bowl out. Um, I don't know if this one, it doesn't look like this one raises the top up or back. Like, I don't think you can move this one. So this one, the bowl stays on there. And then we have the attachment here. And these attachments are usually like uh, you pull it up and then twist it. Okay, so there we go. And there we go. Um, the thing with this though is if you have a lot of dough in here, won't, won't the mixer be stuck in there? Okay, let me kind of give you guys a closer up look here. So we have this. You lift it up and then you twist it. And then you can drop it down because it goes in this thing here. Okay. So lift this up. Twist it and drop it in place. And there you go. It locks into place. So that's pretty much how this works. <clears throat> and once you get this off, obviously, then you can go ahead and lift the bowl out. Okay. This is what this looks like. It has this little metal hook here for some reason. I don't think that attaches to anything. The bowl has this sharp dimple thingy on the back. Oh, that clips into the back there. So I think that's why I was unable to get it out. Okay, so this is what how it works. Okay, you drop this in here. Okay, what happens is you drop that in there, and then back here you have this um, little piece that you can push it down. And it locks it in place. Oh, why am I... Does it happen automatically when I lift it up? No, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you push that down. And it. there you go. It locks in place. Okay? So to take this out, what you got to do is you got to push down here, I'm pretty sure. Right? Or do you have to actually get your hand in there? Yeah, nobody's going to be getting their, getting their hand in there to get that out. So... Huh. All right, let's see. If you lift this up. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and read over the booklet because I don't want to mess around with this and damage anything. So now for the part that nobody likes, the instruction manual. Okay, so we're going to put this over here for now. And we're going to go ahead and go over the instruction manual. All right, here you go. I'm going to lower this down because our main focus now is the instruction manual. We'll have this in the background. Okay, here you go. Stand mixer bowl lift. <clears throat> okay, here you go. They have the different types of connectors and parts. They have all these numbers on it. You have the motor head, attachment hub, attachment knob. You don't need to know what all these things are called. But uh, if you want, here you go. Okay, bowl type may vary, vary. Bowls are also available to purchase as separate accessories. 
and included with select models. Picture styles may vary. Anyways, here you go. So we only have one of these beaters. I don't know why it shows. So it shows two different types. Um, how do you know if it's type 16 or type 17? So there's wire whip and then there's 11 wire stainless elliptical whip. Um, how do I know what this is? It says NSF on here. There's some writing on here, but it's really hard to read. Um, you have to get the lighting just right. I don't know if you can see it on there. There you go. W10745196 NSF. Is there anything else on there? It's hard to read with the lighting. No? All right. How do you know 11 wire versus... Okay. Wire whip. And then the other one is 11 wire stainless steel elliptical whip. Can I count these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Okay, so there's I counted twenty two, which each wire is two because it goes over like that. So I guess this is the eleven wire stainless steel elliptical whip. And we don't have the um we don't have the the regular wire whip, okay? So there we go. If you want to know, motor head, attachment hub. All right, well, you probably don't need to see all that. Let's go on to the next one, product safety. Um, again, you can pause and then read all of that if you want so you can know which part is what. Let me try and get it all in view. That way if something is broken or you need help with something and you're like, uh, my pouring shield, what's the, then I can look it up. All right, there you go, product safety. <clears throat> All right, um, you can read this on your own, but let me read it over and right, they have many safety stuff. That's the safety alert, All right? You can be killed or seriously injured if you don't follow the instructions. Okay, <clears throat> all the basic stuff, all right? Obviously don't put it in water while you're using it, All right? Don't put the stand mixer in water or other liquids. Um, it's not intended for use by people, including children, with reduced physical or sensory or mental uh, mental uh, capabilities or lack of experience and knowledge unless they are closely supervised and instructed concerning the use of the um, appliance by a person responsible for their safety. Close supervision is necessary. All right, basically, don't let people that can't or don't know how to use this use it because they can hurt themselves. Turn the appliance off and then unplug from the outlet when not in use. Um, before assembling or disassembling parts and before cleaning, to unplug, grasp the plug. All right, just like everything else, don't pull from the cord or the cable. Um, avoid con contacting moving parts. <clears throat> All right, keep hands, hair, and clothing away. Obviously, you don't want to stick stuff in while it's moving and then you can get caught. All right, my cat's kind of getting in the way. Move over. <clears throat> All right. Do not operate any appliance with a damaged cord or plug. Okay, more obvious stuff. Um, use of accessories or attachments not recommended or sold by the manufacturer can cause fire, so only use the recommended attachments. All right, do not use the stand mixer outdoors. Do not let the cord hang over the edge of the table or counter. And remove the flat beater, wire whip, or spiral dough hook from the stand mixer before washing. Okay. Um, all right, save these instructions. Uh, I have a feeling a bunch of it is in like another language. Yep, so we got Spanish here and French here. So we're only gonna do the English one, obviously. So we'll only go all the way till here. So we're just going that far. I don't know if there's other, I think it's just French and Spanish there. Okay, so more electrical safety hazard stuff. All right, it says not to use an extension cord. If the power supply cord is too short, have a qualified electrician or service person install an outlet near the um, near the appliance. Maximum rating is based on the attachment that draws the greatest load or power. Other recommended attachments may draw significantly less power. Okay, electrical shock. So use the three uh, pronged one. Some people like to get rid of the ground plug. Don't do that, or you can electrocute yourself. All right. 
Then you got the flat beater uh, and the flex beater for normal to heavy mixtures, cakes, cream, frost, cream frosting, candies, cookies, biscuits, pie, pastry, meatloaf, and mashed potatoes. So I'm likely going to use the flat beater for the thing I'm going to make, some cookies. So we're going to use this. I am going to have to wash all of this before I use it because there could be some factory growth stuff on it. All right. Then the spiral dough hook is for mixing and kneading yeast doughs. So bread, rolls, pizza dough, coffee cakes, and buns. Then you got the wire whip or the 11 wire elliptical whip for mixtures that need air incorporated like eggs, egg whites, heavy cream, uh, boiled frostings, sponge cakes, mayonnaise, and some candies. Okay. All right, so here's the speed controls. All speed features, soft start, which allow the stand mixer to start at a lower speed to help avoid ingredient splash out. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and flower puff, so it'll actually start at lower speeds even if you try and start it fast. Hey, <laughs> move over. Okay, you can see, all right, the speed control can be set between the speeds listed in the chart to obtain the speeds one three five seven and nine if a finer adjustment is required wait what the speed control can be set between oh okay so basically what they're saying is you can go between so you can go to number one and then you can go to two and then you can go in between three four five six even though they just put two four six eight ten okay all right <clears throat> Um, uh, what else? Stir, flat beater, flat, okay, flat beater, flex edge beater, stirring. For slow stirring, combining, mashing, and starting, hopefully you guys can read that, starting all mixing procedures used <clears throat> use to add flour and dry ingredients to batter and add liquids to dry ingredients. Do not use stir speed uh, to mix or knead yeast doughs, all right? So you don't want to use the, so, okay, so that's what they say, the stir speed. All right, it's meant for slow stirring, combining, mashing, and starting all mixing procedures. And you use that to add dry ingredients so it doesn't like fly into the air and liquids when you add liquids to dry ingredients. All right, and then speed number two will be used for the flat, uh, flat beater, flex edge beater, and the spiral dough hook, um, slow mixing and kneading. So this is for mixing stuff slowly, mashing, faster stirring, <clears throat> or and faster stirring. Uh, use this to mix and knead yeast doughs, heavy batters, and candies. Uh, start mashing potatoes or other vegetables, cut shortening into flour, mix thin or splashy batters. So if you have like liquidy batters, you want to use that. All right. Then speed four is used for the flat beater, flex edge beater, wire whip, and the electric. Uh, elliptical whip again the dough hook you only want to use at speed number two okay all right <clears throat> and here you go so speed four you use for mixing and beating for mixing uh, semi heavy batters such as cookies so we're gonna end up having to use uh, speed number four to mix the cookies um, to combine sugar shortening and to add sugar to egg whites for meringues um, wait did I read the other thing all speed features soft start. I don't know if that means like if you go right away to like 10, if it's going to start slowly, I guess we'll find out. I'll test it out and let you know. All right. So speed four is for mixing those heavy batters as like the cookies I'm going to make. Um, you can use it to combine sugar and shortening to add sugar to egg whites for meringues. Medium speed for cake mixes used with food grinder. Rotor, slicer, shredders, pasta roller, and fruit vegetable strainer. Okay. Oops, sorry. I'm going out of view. All right. So speed six is for use with the flex beater, flex edge beater, wire whip, and the uh, elliptical wire elliptical whip. All right. This is for beating and creaming. So yeah, it's for making things like whipped cream and like those um, uh, egg meringue stuff and fluffy egg whites. All right. For medium fast beating, creaming, or whipping. Used to finish mixing cake, donut, and other batters uh, at high speed for cake mixes. Oh, I, I, sorry, 8 to 10 is for that. All right, so speed 8 to 10 is for the wire whip and the uh, 11 wire elliptical whip. This is for fast beating and whipping for whipped cream, egg whites, and boiled frostings. Uh, for whipping, 
small amounts of cream, egg whites, or for final whipping of mashed potatoes, okay? Sorry for mixing up the two. Anyways, note, use speed two to mix or knead yeast doughs. Use of any other speed creates high potential for stand mixer failure. Um, the power need power knead spiral dough hook efficiently needs most yeast doughs within four minutes. Here you can see for cookies, the capacity, nine to 10 dozen, five to 5.5 quart. For 13 dozen, six to 6.5 quart. And 7.75, seven to 7.5 quart is 14 dozen. Um, this one said, what did it say on it again? <laughs> 13, okay, makes up to 13 dozen cookies. So this is the six to 6.5 quart. Okay, here you go, product assembly. Obviously, make sure it's off. And then, um, wait, and then unplug? Assembly, what? Okay, oh, okay, when you're putting it together, you don't want it plugged in. Okay, here you go. To attach the bowl, fit the bowl supports over the um, locating pins and press the bowl down on the back of the bowl until the bowl pin snaps into the spring latch. So I already did that. All right, that's what I was showing you guys earlier, how I snapped it into the back here by pushing on the back. <clears throat> right, to attach the accessory, slip the accessory onto the uh, shaft, turn the hook, wait, turn to hook it uh, over the pin on the shaft. All right, oh, that's what I was showing you already for this. To raise the bowl, rotate the bowl uh, uh, lift lever to the straight up position. The bowl must always be in the raised position when mixing. All right, so I showed you guys that already. Um, yeah, you don't want to mix it while it's down here. You have to raise this up here while you're doing the mixing, okay? All right, so we got the assembly, product assembly, all right? And then it tells you again, make sure to plug into a three-pronged outlet Okay, test the beater uh, to bowl clearance. Plug the stand mixer into a grounded one. Turn it to um, on and test each speed, making sure the beater does not touch the bowl during operation. If the beater is too far away from the bottom, um, <clears throat> from the bottom or is hitting the bowl, proceed to the next step to make adjustments. So they have this, so you can adjust the height of the bowl to make sure it doesn't hit anything. Okay, so you can raise and lower the bowl here. Optional to adjust the beater to bowl clearance. Lower the bowl to the down position. Turn the screw slightly counterclockwise uh, left to raise the beater or um, wait, what? Oh, counterclockwise left to raise the beater or clockwise right to lower it. Adjust the beater so that it just clears the surface of the bowl. Check again the clearance of the beater to the bowl. All right, so important. When properly adjusted, the flat beater will not strike on the bottom or the sides of the bowl. If the flat beater or the wire whip is so close that it strikes the bottom of the bowl, coating may wear off the, uh, wear off the beater or wires um, on the whip. <coughs> what? On the whip may wear. I think they meant or. Okay. Oh, wires on the, I'm, or wires on the whip may wear. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Okay, so you want to make sure it doesn't hit, hit, actually touch the bowl when it's in use. <clears throat> All right, product assembly using the pouring shield. Here you go. So to avoid having ingredients splashing out of the bowl when mixing, as well as to easily pour ingredients into the bowl while mixing, attach the, to attach the pouring shield, slide the pouring shield from the front of the stand mixer over the bowl um, the bottom rim of the pouring shield fits inside of the bowl, right? Pour the ingredients into the bowl through the pouring chute. So let me show you this. <clears throat> I'm not making a dough that uses liquid, so I'm not going to be using the pouring chute, but, uh, let me show you how this works. Okay. So you have this, you basically just slide this over and it goes on like so. Okay. And then you can see like it stays in place. All right. Um, I don't know if it matters which way you turn this. I don't think it does, but yeah, so it goes like that and then you can pour stuff in and that way it's easy to get things mixed in. So if you raise this up, you can see you can easily get stuff into the bowl without having to like lower it and move it out of the way. Okay, so there we go. Take that out because I'm not going to be using that. <clears throat> All right. What else we got here? Product usage. So here we go. 
injury handing unplug the mixer before touching the beaters okay yep because you don't want the thing to accidentally turn on while you are um, going to remove this kind of thing so they tell you to unplug so you don't accidentally knock this I feel like to make it simpler they should just have like a special like button that you press here to, in order to be able to move this that would make it easier and safer and you don't have to worry about unplugging it but this is the design they have all right so plug it in again start with lower speed to avoid splashing and increase it gradually refer to the speed control guide do not scrape the bowl while operating scraping the bowl once or twice during mixing is usually sufficient all right so yeah you don't want to scrape the bowl while um, it's on because you might accidentally get the thing sucked into the machine um, <clears throat> yeah all right so here we go for the optional attachments here. All right, turn the stand mixer off, then unplug it, flip the little thing up like I was showing you, insert that in. Um, all right, make sure that the thing fits into the square attachment hub socket, and then you tighten this to lock it into place. All right, and I kind of already went over that just from looking at it. Then you have disassembly here. Um, turn it off, all right, remove the pouring shield. So uh, lift the front of the pouring shield clear of the rim of the bowl and then pull it away from the stand mixer. Remove the accessory. They didn't tell you to lower the bowl, but you're supposed to lower the bowl, I'm pretty sure. All right, remove the accessory. Press accessory upward and turn to the left. So I already showed this. Remove the bowl. Place the bowl lift. Uh, so place the bowl lift lever in the down position. Grasp the bowl handle and lift straight up and off the uh, lo locating pins. So let's go ahead and try that because uh, I locked it in place. So if we lift straight up, you can see if I lift straight up. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay, when you put this thing on, okay, you can see it's tilted at an angle like this. And then you want to lock the bolt. Oh, why does it do that? You want to lock the bowl in place. So while it's on there, I guess hold both sides down and then lock it in place like that. Okay. So just like that. And then that way, when you lift this up, it's locked in place and it's not going anywhere. All right. When this is in the down position, if you lift straight up, I'm going to have to do this carefully. So I'm going to get my hand underneath here. Let me see if I can. Oop. Let me see if I can show you guys this a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to lock it in place. Okay, so if I get my hand underneath here, and then I just lift it up, and there you go, it unlocks. Okay, and then you can take this out. So, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. You do have to also watch and make sure you get this on both sides. Um, getting this down is kind of weird, so make sure you hold on both sides and rock it down goes in place and again when you lift up why isn't it like unlocking easily okay i guess that kind of scares me because when you lift it up it hits this so if you have like liquidy stuff in here it's gonna like splash out everywhere all right we'll lock it in again we'll try this one more time i don't know why they how come it came out so easily this time what is this Sometimes it comes out easily and sometimes it doesn't. All right, we'll do this again. Lock it in. Okay. Ah, okay. So don't do not do what they say, okay? They said lift straight up. If you lift straight up, it like goes up like this, okay? What you want actually is to twist it this way. So kind of hold it. And then with your thumb, you kind of push it into the machine like this. All right. And there we go. So that's how you should do it. Hopefully I didn't damage the bowl trying to do it the way they said. Um, but yeah, hopefully this one bit of instruction will help you guys. All right. Again, it's, it's weird because locking this in, it takes quite a bit of force. Okay, and then taking it out again, if you push, if you do it right, just push with your thumb here and lift with this hand like that. And you can see how easily it came out, right? So I guess if you start it like this, can you even do it that way? No, you can't. I don't think so. Yeah, no. So you get it in like that and then you 
click that down into place. And then taking it out, you grab here again. It's easier if you push with your thumb and unlock it like that. Okay, so hopefully that one little tip or trick will help a lot of you guys. And if you're wondering, the adjustment screw is right here. You use a little flathead screwdriver right here. Okay, and adjusting this will raise and lower this part, this area. Okay, I think it lowers it here or something. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So hopefully that part will be very useful to you guys because that was confusing to me. I'm sure people will just like grab it and like pick it up and be like, what are you talking about? That was easy. Anyways. All right. So that's how you get it out. They tell you lift straight up, but uh, yeah. Anyways, let's see again when, when they said how to put it on. Are you really supposed to push, smash it down like that? Okay. Um, put it on there, spring latch, okay, fit the bowl, supports over locating pins, and press down on the back of the bowl until the bowl pin. Yeah, they tell you to like push on the back, but I feel like, okay, let me lock this in, and then if you push on the back, will it go in without flying out? <laughs> no, see? If you push on the back like that, this thing just flies off those hooks, so... Yeah, don't do it the way they say. Do it do it like this. Put this on the two raised pins here, okay? Get it on the two raised pins. Put your hands over the sides here and then push towards the back like that. Like rock it that way. All right? And then same thing with this. Push with your thumb here. If you're right-handed, push with your thumb here and lift up like that, okay? All right. So, that's how you do it. The instructions aren't too good with with this. People are probably going to be like telling me they couldn't figure it out they were breaking their thing. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so that's how you remove the bowl and that's how you put the bowl on. Okay, and also when you put these attachments on, you want to do it while the bowl is in the down position. Okay, we're going to spin this around. I'm pulling up on it while I spin it around until it goes up like that and then we can rotate it. And there you go, it's locked into place. And then to remove it, lift it up, rotate it uh, clockwise, and you can see it comes out. Okay, just like that. Okay, there we go. It didn't really say if you take the hook thing out first. Do you see it? Oh yeah, you remove this, and then you remove the bowl. Okay, next one, we have the care and cleaning here. Right, of course, again, turn it off, unplug it, wipe everything down. Okay. Um, and then it tells you following the parts, dishwasher safe, top rack only, bowl, flat beater, flex edge beater, spiral, dough hook, 11 wire elliptical whip, and pouring shield. Are you serious? Okay. Top rack only. Who has a, who has a dishwasher top rack that's this ginormous? The top rack of my dishwasher is like, <laughs> it's it's maybe half that. There's no way you can fit this on the top rack. All right, anyways, wash this by hand, I guess, or risk damaging it in the bottom rack, and then they'll void your warranty because they'll say you didn't put it in the top rack. <laughs> um, anyways, everything seems to be, for the most part, dishwasher safe, except obviously this motor thing. Okay, but it says to put it in the top rack only. All right, and then the following part should be hand washed um, only using warm soapy water and dried thoroughly. Okay, so the wire whip, um, they tell you to um, hand wash. Um, I don't know why it says the wire whip only. So the 11 elect elliptical whip, you don't have to hand wash. You can put it in the dishwasher, but the one that we don't have, the wire whip, you have to hand wash only. All right, so we don't have that one, so we don't have to worry about that. Anyways, visit kitchenaid.com forward slash quick start for additional in, uh, instructions with videos, inspiring recipes, and tips on how to use and clean your stand mixer and accessories available with select models only and available as an accessory purchase. Okay, here you go. Troubleshooting guide. Plug into a grounded three-prong outlet. All right, same stuff. All right, what else do we got here? Anything important? 
problems, all right? If the stand mixer warms up during use, all right, under heavy loads um, with extended mixing time periods, you may not be able to comfortably touch the top of the stand mixer. This is normal. Okay, if it makes an odor, that's also normal, especially with new motors. Eventually the smell will go away, okay? If the flat beater hits the bowl, stop the stand mixer and see the product assembly uh, section and adjust the beater uh, to bowl clearance, okay? The speed uh, control lever does not move smoothly or easily, all right? So <clears throat> to move the speed control lever with ease, Lift up slightly as you move it across the settings in either direction. Okay, so I guess if you if you pull it down, oh man, I can't see it again. All right, let's get this back in view for you guys. So if you pull this down and you try and move it, it's really hard to move this. So what you do is you lift it up slightly and then you can move it a lot easier. Okay, so what is that? There's like little flakes of stuff like coming out here. Okay, so you want to make sure when you move this, um, it's easier if you're slightly pulling up on it than if you're pulling it downwards, okay? So, yeah, okay? All right, I wouldn't have even thought, to, like, pulling it down while I'm doing it. I'm just going from side to side like this, okay? All right, what else? Um, if your stand mixer should fail to operate, please check the following. If the stand mixer is plugged in, obviously make sure <laughs> it's plugged in. If the is the fuse in the circuit to the stand mixer in working order. If you have a circuit breaker box, be sure the circuit is closed. All right. <clears throat> I don't know if they're talking about the fuse inside of this or the circuit breaker fuse. Um, anyways, and then turn off the stand mixer for 10 to 15 seconds, then turn it back on. If the stand mixer still does not start, allow it to cool for 30 minutes before turning it back on. It said 20 minutes earlier, and now it's saying 30 minutes in the troubleshooting. I don't know which one to follow, but uh, if you wait 30 minutes, you'll be safe either way. Okay, if problem cannot be corrected, see the warranty and service section. Do not return the stand mixer to the retailer. Retailers do not provide service. That is true. But if the item is on sale, um, then, or if you still have the same price or same sale, um, you can actually return it and then buy a new one, <laughs> um, depending what's going on. Anyways, here you got the warranty and service. KitchenAid stand mixer warranty for the 50 United States. Okay, you can read all of this on your own because this is just warranty stuff and you'll only need this if you're warrantying it. So it's not really something that I kind of need to read through, I don't think. I don't think anyone's really, really going to use this at all. So we'll see. Um, but they tell you, like, what isn't covered. So if it's used in more than a single family home use, damage from accident or altercation, alteration, sorry, um, any shipping or handling cost to deliver your stand mixer to an, un to an authorized service. Oh, so they won't pay for the shipping. Shoot, shipping this thing's gonna probably be already like hundred bucks. <laughs> All right. Anyways, replacement parts or repair labor costs to stand mixer attachments operated uh, outside the fifty U.S. Okay, so if you're not in the U.S. states, um, Puerto Rico or Canada, then they won't cover replacement parts or repair labor. Okay. Um. Yeah. So if that's the case, it's better if you just return it to Costco or something. All right, here you go. Warranty and service, hassle-free. They're co uh, they're so confident in the quality of our products. Um, okay, so if it fails within the first year, then they'll arrange to deliver an identical or comparable replacement to your door free of charge and arrange to have your original stand mixer returned to us. Your replacement unit will also be covered by our one-year limited warranty. If your stand mixer should fail within the first year of ownership, simply call their toll-free number there. Okay. Wait, it didn't say they'll pay the return sh they'll pay the shipping to return it back, but they said they'll ship you one for free. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. There you go. And yeah. So basically they'll send you a replacement and then you would use that packaging materials to ship back the old one. Oh, actually it says prepaid shipping label. Okay. So I don't understand this because this says they'll pay for the return shipping and everything. This one says KitchenAid will not pay for any shipping or handling 
costs to deliver your stand mixer to an authorized service center. Oh, I guess I guess if you're sending it to get repaired, but this is the exchange, like they'll send you a replacement. So yeah, so that's nice, okay? Then for Canada, they have, I guess, similar thing. Okay, if you're in Canada, I think they'll do the same thing. Replace is identical, and then you call their number, and yeah, I think same thing. They'll give you a prepaid shipping label. And then for service, after the warranty expires, then they have this. Um, they have these numbers to contact them for that. Okay, phone number, and outside the U.S., they have that for Mexico as well. All right. What's next? Oh, last. Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's the entire booklet. Um, sorry, that was such a long thing. Hopefully, you guys found that useful. Hopefully, at least one person found that useful. If it helped one person, I'm happy with that. All right. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. I'm gonna remove this. Um, I know most people just cut it off. I'm gonna use a needle and pop this out so that I can throw this in the box and have it the same way because I'm weird like that. I keep all the packaging material. All right, give me a second. I'll be back. I'm going to wash all this stuff as well, and then I'm going to put some stuff in here to start mixing it. All right, I'll see you guys once I have all that ready. All right, I'm back. So let's go ahead and undo this plug thing here. Again, I'm just going to use this needle, and I'm going to try and remove this. Okay, so we're going to lift that, and... Let's go ahead and, oops, lift that out of the way. Yeah, I keep dropping it. I know you guys aren't here to see how to remove zip ties, but there we go. Okay, toss that in the box. All right, one other thing. So I did wash this stuff already. Okay, you can see it's all steamy and stuff. I wanted to see if I can just store everything in the bowl, and it looks like we can. So, nice thing is, you just drop that on there, okay? And obviously, you don't have to um, attach it, or you don't have to snap it in place. So, I'm just going to put it on the two hooks there. There we go, and then we can slide this on, right? Yeah, so you can just store everything like this. You don't really need to worry about... Um, having a place to store everything else okay all right let's go ahead and assemble this i'm gonna mix all the ingredients all in this or i'm gonna put all the ingredients in the bowl and then i'm just gonna start with mixing it all right so i'll come back with all the ingredients in the bowl and then you guys will see i'm gonna start it up and see how it stirs all right i'll see you guys in a bit all right so we're back we got this i got all the stuff mixed in this bowl I might need to add more butter, but for now, let's go ahead and see. Okay, so we got that. Make sure that's on. Again, I'm going to push on both sides and then tilt it in. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the mixing blade that we need. Okay, get that into place. All right, let's find out where is it. Okay, the thing is there. Okay, so get that on. Oops. Lift it up. Twist it in. Drop it in. All right, let me go plug it in. I'll be back. All right, so we got it plugged in. Let me actually get a little closer here maybe. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move it to the stir. Oh, oops. We need to raise this up, obviously. So raise this up now. Okay, so now it's raised in the raised position. We're going to go to stir. happened what's happening what's going on here <laughs> what's going on here it's locked in oh there we go why wasn't it stirring the first time there we go so you can see it stirring we do have some butter in there okay we'll turn it a little bit higher let me actually put the little um pouring guard thing in to help with the stuff flying up it's not really much but we are getting some like powder kind of going into the air all right let's go back to stir mode 
go a little bit faster. Again, I'm probably going to have to add more butter here, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. There we go. We can speed it up a little more. And we're just going to let it run. Take a while. So far, it's not warm at all. Okay. going up till four so this is at a three right now you can see flour is like getting beaten up into the air so I think I'm gonna have to do it slower okay we're getting flour everywhere because this batter is a semi like a pretty dry dough batter I am gonna have to get more um, more butter to put in but for now, we'll speed it up a little bit. It's on a two. But yeah, we're definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna have to add more butter to this one. Um, but the thing is running pretty cool right now. It's not really warm or anything. Okay, you can hear it's getting smoother uh, as it breaks up the butter. Let's speed it up a bit. Yeah, it's kicking a lot of flour and uh, powder into the air. Okay, so let's take a look right now. I am going to have to add more butter in here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to add more butter. I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I put more butter in. Let's go ahead and start it again. Oops. I forgot. <laughs> Don't forget to raise it back up. <laughs> All right, let's go again. I might have to add more, but we'll see how this goes first. Yeah, it's still pretty dry, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to add more. Right. It's kicking the flour into the camera. Alright, I'm going to add more. Let's lower this back down. I'm gonna turn it, turn this this way so I can easily have access. I hope I'm not gonna end up adding too much here. All right, let's go ahead and add this in. Come on, plop off. Plop off, please. Here we go. Okay, and then let's go ahead and lift it back up and start it again. Let's see. Oh, I didn't check the... Okay, so they do... It does somewhat start slow when you first spin it, even if you go all the way here. You can see it takes a while. So that's to prevent it from splattering out everywhere. Okay. Let's see... Still, still pretty doughy. I don't know if I added too much of an ingredient or something. It looks like I'm going to have to add way more of the butter. Alright, you can see it's 
still. Wow, that makes longer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need more butter here. Okay, it's actually, the dough starting to incorporate a bit. It's getting more rough the way it's mixing. I hope it's not that it's not quite reaching the walls enough. Maybe I need to lower this more. I don't know. Um, let's see here. Because I feel like maybe this isn't quite getting all the ingredients incorporated. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to check this by hand. My hands are clean. I washed everything, so... Hmm. Is it not quite reaching low enough? Is that what's going on? Or do I need more butter? Eh. I think I just need a little more butter, actually. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm breaking the rules because I didn't unplug it and I got my hand in here. This thing might randomly turn on, so I'm going to take this off. <laughs> I mean, it won't randomly turn on, but if I accidentally knock the thing. Okay. Okay. No, I think it's, it just needs more butter. Okay. So we're going to put this back in. Break the rules again. Putting this on without turn unplugging it. Um, if you do that, be very careful that your hands are nowhere near the switch to power it up. Okay. I'm going to put this thing back on. We're going to raise it back up. Again, I'm going to have to add more butter, I'm pretty sure. Um, but let's go ahead and run it on the slow speed again. Now that I kind of mixed everything together at the bottom. Okay, let's go ahead and add some more butter. I'm not sure how much, but uh, hopefully this is enough. Okay, come on. Okay, let's go ahead and try this again and see if we're going to need more. Okay. turning into a dough. I feel like it might not be close enough to the walls because you can see the stuff just gets stuck to the walls and doesn't really move. But uh, it is working. All right, it's starting to form some crumblies. Go ahead and add a little more butter. I think we're just about there. Okay. That might just be about enough. Let's see. Stir it up again. Maybe a tiny bit more, but we'll see. Okay, it's turning into clumpy dough. I 
think we might be there, but I think the mixer, I do need to adjust it. Probably need to raise it up a little bit more. Let's take a look here. The dough is kind of all getting stuck there now, so hmm. I think we're about there. Let's take this one back off again. Okay, wipe this stuff off. Oh, there's still like butter on the blades here, but it is formed like a dough now, as you can see. I can actually compress this into a dough. So I think we're good here. I think we got a good enough amount of butter. Might be too much because I think I didn't adjust it to the right height. So there's still butter here. I think I need to get a flathead screwdriver and adjust that to get it to the right height. Okay. Um, to make sure that we kind of scrape everything off. but uh yeah if I go and squish the dough now you can actually see it's forming a nice ball hopefully I didn't put too much butter in this but uh looks good okay clean off the blade here a little bit and yeah that's pretty much it it looks to work really well with this dough that I made it didn't even get warm so yeah, I don't know. You have to push it really hard, I guess, to get it to get warm like they say in there. Um, they said it's normal for it to get warm. I didn't even see it getting a little bit warm, so I guess I'm nowhere near pushing it to its limits. Okay. All right, so this dough, you can see it's nice. I think I put too much butter, though. <laughs> All right. Anyways, I'm going to see about adjusting the thing here. And then we'll see how that goes. Because right now, it's not adjusted, I think, to the right height. Because it's not close enough to where um, I feel it's getting everything off the way it should. Okay. So, let me show you again if I put this on. And raise this back up. And yeah, I feel like it can go a bit lower. Anyways, let's stir this again. I'm going to see if I can adjust it a tad bit, and we'll see how that goes. Let me go get a flathead screwdriver, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So it says rotate counterclockwise to raise the bowl and clockwise to lower the bowl. So I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise here. And let's see. All right. The screw is pretty tough to turn. Wow, I don't know about that. That's really tough to turn. Okay, let me get a better size screwdriver. We're going to remove this. Let's, uh, do I need to remove the bowl out of the way? Let's get the bowl out. At least a little bit. There we go. Let me get a better screwdriver here. <clears throat> All right, I got this. Nice long screwdriver here. Let's see if we can rotate this. Okay. I'm not sure how much twisting that rotate or raises or lowers the bowl. So we're going to have to go in small increments here, I guess. 
Okay, we'll get this back on. All right, let's get this thing back on. Let's raise it up and see the difference. Okay, it's definitely better, but I feel like it needs to be more. So let's go ahead and get this off again. Move this out of the way. And let's tighten this up some more. Oh, that's as far as it goes. Yeah, it doesn't go any more than that. So, I don't know. Let's see. Is it going to hit or something now? Oh yeah, that's better. I don't know if you can see it now, but it's getting the dough off the walls a lot better than before. Okay, let's get on number four. Yeah, it's actually getting the dough off the walls, not like before. So, much better at this fully raised position. And now all the dough is incorporated. Okay, we're going to lower it. You can see all the dough has been mixed in now. Okay. I don't think it's hitting the bottom, is it? How do I know if it is? I wouldn't know unless I took the dough out, I think. Okay. So I think that's good. All right, so I think we are good. The dough is fully mixed together now. We're gonna take this off so I don't accidentally hurt my hand. Okay, you can see this thing um, came out pretty clean now because the dough is mostly butter and flour. Um, so this came out pretty clean. I am gonna, of course, wash it. Um, but yeah, looks good. We're gonna, again, lift the bowl up just like that. And we'll take this out. Move this guy aside and take a look. All right, give me a second. I'll be back. All right, so I washed most of the parts. I'm going to take the dough out now, okay? And I'm going to transfer it to this bowl so I can test to see how close that um, spatula mixer blade thingy is to the walls because I did adjust it all the way as high as it will go or as low as it will go. So hopefully it's not going to be scraping this at all. Okay, I'm just going to get all this dough out here. I'm not going to show the cookie making process because this isn't a cooking making video. It's just um, to kind of show that the mixer can mix all this stuff in. All right, looks like there might still be some stuff at the bottom here. Oh, it's stuck because I think I threw the butter in first and then it stuck to that spot. Okay, there we go. So I will have to mix this in more. All right, because there's still some of the flowery stuff that didn't mix too well at the bottom here. Okay. All right, so we're going to just wipe all the edges out. Stick it all to that ball of dough. Okay, there we go. Here's the ball of dough here. Okay. All right, at the bottom there was still some dry ingredients, so I am going to throw this back in and mix it up again. Um, but I do want to check the how close it is to getting um, all the edges here. Because even though I put it at the lowest possible, it doesn't seem like it's even touching this so yeah all right let's go ahead and move this back into view um there's some water down there so i guess let me clean that real quick and the flour okay a lot of 
flower and stuff that went up out over here, out of over the edges. Okay. Clean that up. Because otherwise there's going to be flour everywhere. All right. We'll get the bowl back on here. Okay. Push that back in. Oops. Going out of view here. Okay, let me go get the mixer tools and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. We got this mixing blade. Um, actually, I need to dry it because I don't want water in this dough. Okay. All right, let's get this in a place. Line it up. All right, there we go. Let's raise this up again. And is it touching? How do I know if it's touching it or not? It doesn't seem like it's touching it. Yeah, I don't think it's touching the bowl. So even at the highest raised position, or at the lowest raised position, um, it's not touching. So let's lower this. We'll throw this ball of dough back in there. Raise it back up. And let's set it to the lowest setting. Wow. Okay, even with the whole thing as a ball, it was able to break it up. Set it higher. Higher. Oh god. Okay, let me put the thingy back on before it throws the dough all over the place. I probably need to get the dough off the hook or this thingy. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this back into place over there. All right, let's stir it up. bit warm um, towards the back on this side but other than that it's not even that warm it's just a little bit warm and I feel like I'm putting it through some major stress right now <laughs> Thing that feels uncomfortable. And wipe off the dust powder. Uh oh, this thing got knocked out. This thing got knocked out a little bit. Be careful, it almost. Okay, there we go. that's pretty well incorporated now um, I think we are good it's mixing a lot better with that setting okay as you can see it keeps all the stuff um, off the edges it doesn't build it up or pile it up so I think we are good to go that's pretty much it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video sorry it was such a long one um, hopefully you guys got some helpful tips in here from um, how to use it how to adjust it everything like that thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I really feel this mixer does pretty well. Um, I don't know if the other design where it clips into the bottom might be better. Uh, because this one, the this bowl thing stand can kind of move a little bit away from this. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. But uh, it does seem to work really well. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye. Okay, one thing I didn't mention um, to take note of, the nice thing about this design, this thing is about 16 and a half inches tall, okay? It fits almost perfectly underneath these cabinets here. And the nice thing, because this isn't the, the model where this lifts up, um, and this is the only part that lifts up here, okay?
So the nice thing about this design is you can leave it underneath your thing here and you can easily just take this out and use it, all right? So let me confirm and make sure because I wanna make sure that you can actually raise the bowl up properly and use it. Let me move this over a tiny bit. Okay, problem is this lever needs to go up. So you might need the lever to be on this side. So maybe not under these cabinets. Or if I turn it more sideways, then it'll be good. Um, because right now it's going to hit that. Let me turn it real quick and I'll be back. All right, so I got it in here. And I can still kind of reach this. I would have to just move this a little bit. Um, and then as you can see, we can use this and put it all the way up and put it back down. No problem. Again, I would just move this over a tiny bit and then I have complete access to this. No problem, I can grab this and I can take it out. All right, so the design is actually really nice if you have more limited space. Okay, and then I can, oh, it's hard to do this with one hand while I'm recording, but there you go. I could snap that into place and I can use it in this corner right here. Very nice, good space saving design. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one.